there! Welcome back to the classroom. Let's put a little vacay in your day. Today's vacay Q&A comes from Tony in Washington State. Tony says, Hi, Ms. Kears. Hi, Tony. I've been working on sending confirming responses when engaging in face-to-face -face conversations. I never realized how often I interrupt and redirect the conversation until I read this lesson. How can I contain my thoughts to let others finish without losing what I wanted to say? Well, Tony, it can be tricky to let others finish what they have to say without losing our train of thought. The first thing we have to do is evaluate what we have to say. Is it in fact relevant to the conversation at hand? Or is it simply something that we've got going on in our head that doesn't really pertain to the conversation we're having with this person? Once we evaluate it, if in fact it is relevant to the conversation that we're having, we need to make a note somehow. So remember, it's always a good idea to have something to write on and something to write with. So if you have to, to pause for a moment and write something down so that you don't forget it, that's perfectly understandable. Especially if you communicate to the other person, go ahead, I'm listening, and jot something down real quick. It lets them know that you're being considerate and letting them finish a thought before you start in with your own. So if you have something to write on and write with, the best way to handle that is to just make a quick note and let them finish. Because then, when they are finished with their thought, they know that you have something to add and they're expecting that. However, if you don't have something to write on or something to write with, there are some little memory tricks that you can use. My favorite is I touch two fingers together. So if maybe you sit like this all the time, then that's not going to work. Find some sort of hand gesture that you don't do often. For instance, if I touch these two fingers together, I can sit there and you may not even notice that I'm making a particular hand gesture, but for me, it's keeping a constant reminder that I have something to say too, that I'm sort of holding on to it, right? Now the trick to that is, when you put those two fingers together, you have to make a conscious thought connection between why you're doing this and what it is that you have to remember. So again, it's just sort of a subtle gesture that the other person may not even notice, but you'll notice because those two fingers are touched together for a reason. And you'll remember that as soon as there's a pause in the conversation, then you know you have something to say. Now, if it's really important and you're afraid you're going to forget, you can take your nail, right, and just give it a little pressure there so that it sort of hurts. It sort of pinches just a little bit. That keeps it right at the forefront of your mind. So therefore, as soon as that other person pauses or finishes their thought, you can continue the conversation with what you have to say. So Tony, just to recap, the first thing we have to do is evaluate if in fact what we're fixing to add to the conversation adds to the conversation. If it does, then let's make a note of it, either a textual note or a physical reminder of our own and that way, when there's a pause in the conversation and it's our turn to speak, we know what we want to say. Okay, Tony, I hope this helps. Leave me a comment in the box below and let me know. And if you have any follow-up questions, just leave them there, and I'll either get back to you in the comments or with another video. See you next time.